Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk today about Barry Jones. Uh, stick around. We've got an interview coming up with him. Uh, I attended a uh, book signing in Lansfield, and uh, Barry was nice enough to sign a couple of my books. And um, I asked him during the uh, book launch that he was doing up there in Lansfield if he would like to give an interview. Um, I gave him my card. Uh, he'd heard of the Melbourne Underground Film Festival. Um, we spoken briefly about uh, you know how his own Barry Jones's own involvement um, with the Australian film industry, and um, you know how he helped build it in the early 70s with people like Philip Adams and stuff and uh, he said there were a lot of talented people around the Australian film industry then and I said there's a lot of talented ones around now but they're not getting funding uh, and uh, so I wanted to uh, I guess ask him a few difficult questions um, uh, he's a definite climate change advocate and uh, he's no friend of Donald Trump so I did ask him a few um, difficult questions but uh, I don't think it was like I, I didn't mean the interview to be like a kind of gotcha kind of interview and I, I don't think it is um, the interview was kind of cut short by the lady who ran the bookshop up there in Lansfield. Uh, I think she probably didn't like the uh, way your questioning was going, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, this is what happened, and uh, I want you to enjoy it. So stick around and watch the Barry Jones interview, the report. Hug him out. Thank you. Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain. We're going to chat today. Um, what's your new book about? Tell us a little bit about your new book. Well, the essential thing about what is to be done is the, the challenge that liberal democracies like our own face that the, we've done reasonably well. In fact, Australia's done pretty well in handling the COVID crisis. It has, They've, hasn't it? You know, it has done very well compared, say, to what's happened in, in Europe and in North America. Do you worry about the totalitarian aspects of, of this kind of COVID crisis, though, the way we seem to be losing some of our rights? Well, I can see that it's only a temporary phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I don't imagine we'll be wearing masks forever. I hope not. And if the if the intention is to uh, if the intention is to uh, eliminate the virus, and there's a fair chance that this is happening in Victoria, yes, then it's worth making that brief sacrifice. Yes. What I'm more concerned about is mm -hmm. that although we have on paper anyway a very much better informed. Uh, community with access to digital technology in, in all directions. Far more people have tertiary qualifications than ever had before. But mm -hmm. the political system is very, very much under threat. Mm -hmm. In the United States, even, yeah, although uh, Biden uh, won with a majority of uh, more than six and a half million votes, mm -hmm. in fact, if, what Trump, if Trump had won just 301,000 more votes strategically in, in, in some of those. He would have won. He would have won. What do you so, uh, make of the accusations of voter fraud and uh, voter irregularities? Things like, um, obviously, the COVID crisis created a situation where there are a lot of mail in ballots. And in a way, I mean, you know, there's something slightly suspicious, not possible. Well, they've only had mail in ballots since the 1860s. That's I mean, true. not exactly an innovation. But why, why isn't media questioning it? I mean, that's a strange thing. Do you think there's a kind of complicity with the kind of liberal agenda or something? How do you mean? Well, um, you know, like, like if the same situation was reversed, and that, you know, like, uh, Donald Trump had, had won by, you know, like some, like, I don't know, 200,000 mail-in ballots, and there were some irregularities, and it appeared maybe the Republican Party was kind of loading the ballot, maybe, and, you know, I'm sure mainstream media would question it. I mean, I worry about uh, mainstream media bias. Obviously, there's the Murdoch media, which we know they do favour the right wing, but um, CNN and um, a lot of mainstream media in the US obviously favours Biden. You, you obviously know the divide. Well, you've got to, this is quite interesting. You've got to argue, not that we're talking about my book, of course, no, we're talking about your idea, but the, uh, the, the critical thing is, uh, it's interesting. The Republicans actually did pretty well in the House of Representatives. They did. And they looked like they retained the Senate. I wonder if those votes were fake as well. Yeah, I understand what you mean there. That's a good point. Um, so back to your book. Um, well, I thought, wonder whether you'd get back to it. Of course, of course. Um, uh, so you, you raised the whole issue of climate change. Uh, would you like to address that? Yes. Yes. Um, say about it. Um, the focus on CO2, do you think that is a, um, 
I mean, obviously things like the oceans contribute a lot to CO2 and uh, volcanoes. And, you know, obviously energy prices are going to go up with a lot of climate action and things like that. And so obviously if we are to kind of um, hurt with the working class and the middle class with higher energy prices, there needs to be a damn good reason for this. And obviously... Wait a minute, I'm lost here. Why would there necessarily be high energy prices? Well, um, because obviously not using the cheapest energy source, like coal or something like that. Uh, funnily enough, I would have thought of sunlight as being even slightly cheaper. It's true, no, it is, but it's the technology quite up to scratch at the moment. Yes. Did you see the Michael Moore documentary, The Planet of the Humans? When he said the green energy kind of isn't quite up to scratch at the moment. The new book. Michael Moore is a wonderful expert on medicine. Michael Moore, you know, the filmmaker. Oh, Michael Moore. Yeah, yeah. He did oh, a documentary. Mostly, Mike, mostly, really. Three quarters of an hour. But anyway, look, it's an interesting question. I, I always just think it's just um, something that's worth debating. But this book seems to be an essential read, um, which is about climate change and where to from here, is that right? Well, uh, yes. Well, it's a pleasure talking to you, Harry. Thank well, you. The pleasure is all yours. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, mate. Yeah. Okay. You want to get it? Thank you very much. Thank you for filming it.